Number five, Uluru Rock. If you're heading down under for a vacation this year, well, there's a certain object that remains very cursed there that people don't really recommend you tamper with. And it's huge. Uluru Rock. Yeah, this massive sandstone monolith in Australia was discovered on paper in 1873 by surveyor William Goss. He named the landmark Ayers Rock in honor of the then Chief Secretary of South Australia, Sir Henry Ayers. Known as such, of course, until 1993 when it was officially renamed to Uluru, honoring the title originally given to the Anangu First Nations peoples to whom the site is sacred and more importantly home. This thing is strange. First off, this place is highly, highly sacred. Stumbled upon by the First Nations people of the Northern Aussie area for who knows how long. This site has been known over the eons to have strange powers though, i.e. any tampering, stealing, defacing, or slandering the megalith is a sure way to test your luck against, well, the universe. This place shouldn't be messed with. One man stole a chunk of rock from the monument and experienced so much bad luck that he actually drove 3,000 kilometers to return it in person in an attempt to rid himself of the karma he believed was attached to him. The chip was returned 40 years later. The largest piece of rock that was ever returned back to the site weighed more than 70 pounds. Yeah, this is serious stuff. First off, how the hell did you sneak that off the site? Like, did he just back his truck up to it? Like, yeah. Just chip that big rock off, put it all in. He apparently wrote, Dear Australia, I am so sorry I took this piece of Uluru. I wanted a piece of Australia to take home with me and this was the wrong thing to take. I hope Australia can forgive me and welcome me if I ever come back. Signed, an unwise traveler. Yeah, the reason they advise visitors not to take anything is the paranormal omens connected to said rock. Also, this is a giant rock we're looking at. Like only a 10th of its mass you can see. It's like an iceberg like underground. So before you experience any bad luck, illness, or karma beyond karma any day soon, I just collect seashells and skip this whole thing. No? Number four, the Voynich Manuscript. As always, if you like what we do here at Top 5 Scary, make sure to hit that like button down below or comment down below which archeological find you know of that has impending doom upon the discoverer. I love this stuff. It's scary beyond all belief, but it's interesting. We're all about it here. And speaking of, so apparently there's a giant Italian Renaissance-ish folio called the Voynich Manuscript. It's named after Wilfred Voynich, a Polish Lithuanian book dealer who purchased it in 1912. Um, yeah, we don't really know what this thing is. One thing it most certainly is would be the most bizarre and mysterious book of all time. 100%. Not only is it detailed so carefully and patiently, it's all like Tim Burton-like with an entire world drawn and recorded that isn't ours. Like, is this a parallel universe book? Is this language even known? Like, it's unknown unknown, like predates Latin and doesn't even use phonetic patterns and coding. It's the riddle of all riddles. Written in the 15th century, somewhere they think between 1405 and 1450, all 240 pages are inscribed in some sort of indecipherable language with a small alphabet only of about 170,000 characters. Yeah, it's gonna take a while for them to crack this one. The contents alone have cursed people mad with obscure visions and obsessions for years. My precious. Historians and cartographers have tried to crack the code for hundreds of years, yet not one has been successful. Why wasn't this a national treasure movie? I feel like this would have been perfect. Was it written by people from another world? An unknown species? It's so familiar, yet so alien. Radiocarbon dating from the University of Arizona proved for all pages tested that once started, the writing was continuous for like 20 years. Protein testing revealed that the parchment was actually skin, about 150 calves slain for this Goliath mystery. It remains at Yale waiting to be decoded to this day. Creepy! Number three, the statue of Osiris. And speaking of ancient Egypt, we arrive yet again at something stolen. The statue of Osiris in 1971, during an excavation in Saqqara, a Egyptologist Walter Brian Emery found a small statue of the Egyptian god of death, Osiris. He and his assistant returned to the dig site's office in a nearby village as Emery took the statue of Osiris with him. Once at his house, Emery went to the bathroom to shower, and after moments, his assistant began to hear Emery screaming. He found him clutching the sink, clearly experiencing some kind of trauma. His assistant said that Emery stood there paralyzed. I grabbed him by the shoulders and dragged him onto the couch. Then I ran for the telephone. Emery was diagnosed with paralysis of the right side of his body and was unable to speak. He actually died the following day. Talk about curse of the pharaohs. 
It's been said that there was a possession of a Canadian woman who believed her home had also become haunted by said statue. The woman gave it to the Ontario Museum, which returned it home to Egypt. Have we seen this video of said statue moving on its own? Like, this is from a Manchester museum, and this thing is just moving on its own all day. Yeah, this god's pretty powerful, and this stuff needs to be respected, you know? And returned. Like, you can't just steal stuff and throw it up in a museum overseas. Especially the stuff that clearly says in hieroglyphics, do not remove this, you will be cursed. We're uncovering more and more buried Egypt every day, just please be respectful and leave the stuff alone after discovering and documenting it. And whatever you do, don't play any more instruments, okay? Number two, ballista balls. Almost 2,000 stones were found during archeological excavations in the Gamla Natural Reserve, of which the ancient Jewish city of Golan Heights used to sit. This is the site where the largest number of ballista stones from the early Roman period were found. Basically, these little sanded stones are perfectly smooth and perfectly designed for ancient machine gun slingshots. Oh yeah, and of course, by sling or hand. In 2020, a ballista ball in Israel was returned to the authorities 15 years after it was stolen. Apparently the balls were very cursed. Why was this particular ballista stone considered to be so cursed? Who knows? The artifact has been returned by an anonymous person under the name Mosh Manis. According to Mosh, the thief who stole the ballista stone stole it in 2005 when they were a teenager. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's uh, definitely not me. No, it's a friend of mine. Yeah, uh, no, yeah. No, definitely not me. Him and his friends were touring a display of ballista stones at the Jerusalem Walls National Park in the city of David. These ballista stones were used by the Romans when they were fighting in Jerusalem in 70 AD as part of the first Jewish-Roman war known also as the Great Jewish Revolt. The man returned the 2,000-year-old Roman ballista balls from Gamla and actually wrote a little note on it saying, quote, These are two Roman ballista balls from Gamla from a residential quarter of the foot of the summit. I stole them in July 1995, and since then, they have brought me nothing but trouble. Please do not steal antiques. Uh, you said it, buddy. Those stones have seen their fair share of bloodshed. You don't want any part of that smoke. And coming in at number one, the Wailing Skull. Our number one spot, of course, the one that scares me the most. Skull banshees screaming throughout the middle of the night. Oh yeah, just screeching ghost heads. You know this is a thing, right? Like, way more common than we think. Like, they're like everywhere. Burton Agnes Hall is in East Yorkshire, was built in 1598 during the reign of Elizabeth I by three sisters of the Griffith family. The youngest sister, Anne, was apparently attacked. They beat her after she apparently refused to give them her belongings. Locals heard her cries and came to her rescue and returned her home, though sadly perishing five days later. On her deathbed, she requested that the head be placed within the walls of the unfinished manor. The family ignored her request, and after she was buried and the house's construction was complete, the sisters began to hear sinister noises throughout the empty house. Well, screams, actually. The sisters returned to their family's vault to fulfill the past sister's request, and when they opened the tomb, the body was completely intact, except for the now smiling skull across the room from the body. Okay, the head was taken back to the Burton Agnes Hall and miraculously, the noises and disturbances stopped. It's like she asked to be there or something. The noises would only happen again when later residents tried to remove the skull from the premises. Yeah, I, I'd put that back immediately. Don't mess with people's scary sh like this, you know? The skull was later cemented in the walls for safety. Yeah, I'd hope so. Although the noises have stopped, Anne still makes a ghostly appearance, apparently, on the anniversary of her death. I don't know why people go around touching things, moving them around, like leave them where they layeth, you know? Number five, the Bassano vase. When we think of cursed objects, we start to go through the classics, you know, haunted dolls, haunted paintings, even the old haunted diamond. You don't tend to think of haunted glassware. Well, let the Bassano vase introduce itself. A seemingly unassuming piece of home decor, this sinister flower pot carries with it a deadly curse and legacy. First crafted in the 15th century, the Bassano vase was given to a bride as a wedding gift in Napoli, Italy. The day of the wedding, the husband couldn't find his betrothed anywhere. Upon returning home, he found her on the floor, clutching the vase. After her funeral, the vase was given out to one of her family members, who then fell ill within days and had passed away. Of course, no one assumed the vase had anything to do with it, why would it, despite a suspicious trail already starting to form? The third person to inherit the vase also ended up passing away mysteriously. Huh. Well after the third mysterious death in months, the family contacted a local priest for advice on their situation, and he gave them some reasonable advice. Bury it on hollowed grounds, where no one would find it again. It lay 
dormant until it was dug up in 1988 by an amateur antique hunter who sold the vase off quickly, restarting the treacherous cycle where it traveled once again, ending lives mysteriously and ruining an otherwise nicely decorated living room. After its revival, it was brought to the attention of local police. They tried to pass it off to museums or cultural sites, but understandably, no one wanted anything to do with the wretched pot. So with nowhere else to turn, legend goes that the police returned it where they had once been found, buried deep beneath hallowed ground. Hopefully a little bit deeper this time. Maybe in a lockbox with three padlocks and throw away the keys into the ocean. You know, just to be safe. Are you enjoying yourself, my little ghouls and goblins? Click the subscribe button down below for daily frights from Top 5 Scary. Number 4. The Iceman. The Iceman cometh for us all. In 1991, on the peak of the Otzel Alps in Italy, a pair of mountaineering tourists came across what they thought was a deceased hiker, which in a grandiose sense was kind of true. Not a recent passing, however, because the Iceman in question was dated from 3000 BC. The nature of his passing is unknown, so the criminal could still be out there at large. A fascinating find for the scientific community, the Iceman, nicknamed Otzi after the mountain he was found in, shined a light on history previously unseen. Otzi was the oldest body ever discovered with tattoos, history's first bad boy, if you will. After being unearthed, the body was brought to Austria to be studied intensively, but nothing the researchers discovered could have prepared them for the curse that they had unearthed. A worrying amount of people involved in the study of the Iceman found themselves befelled to an ancient unearthed evil. The first man to discover Otzi, one of the hikers, fell off a path on a mountain to his doom. A mountaineer passed in an avalanche. A forensic pathologist was involved in a lethal car accident en route to give a speech at a university about the Iceman. In total, seven researchers involved in the study of the Iceman and observers found themselves losing their life after meeting him. So where is the Iceman now? Hopefully supervised? Well, Otzi is currently being held in the South Tyrol Museum of Archaeology down in the bottom of Italy, where he is kept in a climate-controlled environment to maintain maintain his preservation. Locked away, visitors are permitted to come see the Iceman, but only through a frozen thick glass window. Is that room to keep him cool and preserved? Or is it to keep whatever curse lay dormant inside his bones docile? All we know is that we're thankful that Otzi's just chillin'. Number 3. The Purple Sapphire Well, not really a sapphire, but actually an amethyst. The spiky purple quartz looking thing. Hey, who said that haunted to hell items can't be precious and beautiful? Well, don't say that, because apparently this one is cursed. Like, cursed cursed. The mysterious Delhi purple sapphire is now permanently on display as part of the Natural History Museum's vault collection of precious gemstones. The mysterious stone is rumored to have been stolen by a British soldier from the Temple of Indra, the Hindu god of war and weather, in Kanpur, India, during the Indian Mutiny of 1857. It was brought to England by Colonel W. Ferris, whose family then supposedly suffered many financial and many health problems. I love how financials first. The stone was given to Edward Heron Allen, a scientist and writer in 1890, who claimed to have started having bad things happen to him and those who were lucky enough or unlucky enough to see or hold it. He came to the conclusion it was hexed with a curse and eventually decided to have it stored away in a bank vault inside seven locked boxes with a note of warning to anyone who dare handle it. Allen warned that the Delhi Purple Sapphire is cursed and is stained with blood and the dishonor of everyone who has ever owned it. Weary of its alleged powers, he kept it locked away in seven boxes and surrounded by good luck charms. He also left strict instructions not to remove the amethyst until 33 years after his death. It's very specific. Heron Allen's own daughter was forbidden under every circumstance to even touch or handle the stone, which, half a year after her father's death, she donated the amethyst to the Natural History Museum where it's on display today. Okay, so his own daughter donated this thing. She didn't even want it. That's a little spooky. Now, I mean, he was a writer, and writers can exaggerate sometimes, but not giving it to his own daughter and her not wanting it at all after his death? That sounds a little bizarre to me. Number two, the haunted book. Okay, so sometimes we all find spooky doodles from the past we drew as kids, finding old spooky pictures or letters written. That could be fun and great for scary stories. Apparently, I drew aliens a lot. Yeah, who'd have thought? This next item holds more than just letters, though. It holds power. This haunted book was given to Brighton's very own haunted house, Preston Manor, after a Kent family who owned it claimed it caused them to be plagued by ghostly visitors and spectral visions. A haunted ledger which was found bricked up behind a shop wall has been acquired by the museum. 
The ledger was donated by Josephine Benyovitz. The book was discovered by her father, Tony Benyovitz, in 1988 when he was demolishing a shop which closed in 1984. Having taken it home, the father and daughter believed they suffered a number of spiritual visions and images of men, women, children, and apparently soldiers on horseback. The ledger, which dates from the First World War, was a clue at maybe who was visiting them. The daughter was told by one of the spirits that the book must be returned to Brighton where its first entry was written, which was in December 1915. The terrified family delivered it to Preston Manor, which is known for its paranormal occurrences and spiritual events. A medium visiting the house inspected the book and confirmed that they could sense evil omens emanating from its pages. It remains locked up only to be viewed after cleansed. Yeah, I don't think I'm going anywhere near this thing. Yeah, all those old books are usually wrapped in like someone's skin or something evil. Yeah. No thanks. And coming in at the number one spot, The Iceman. This definitely had to be my number one spot. And it's not my favorite UFC fighter, Chuck Liddell. But this is the most terrifying find of all. Not really much of an item either, but more like a 5,000 year old frozen and perfectly preserved human mummy that was discovered in 1991 in the Otzel Apps in Italy. Otzi, of course, is the name researchers chose to name the mummy for obvious location reasons. This frozen mummy is of a man who believed to have lived 5,300 years ago. Otzi is believed to have been apparently murdered before being frozen in its time. This is claimed after the discovery of an arrowhead found embedded in his left shoulder and various other wounds on his body. He also has multiple different DNA types on his clothes, suggesting he was in combat or in danger in his last moments. The nature of his life and the circumstances of his death need more investigation, but scientists believe he's Europe's oldest natural known human mummy, offering a very shiny new view of the Copper Age. A huge glacier surrounded him after he died of exposure and preserved his body in a mile high ice cube. However, this is where it really gets spooky. Once unearthed, rumors of a curse surfaced too and grew stronger as people linked to him began to die often in accidents or natural health problems. All in all, so far seven deaths have been tied or loosely related to Aussie's dethawing, including forensic pathologist who was killed in a car accident en route to give a speech about Aussie the Iceman, a mountaineer who died in an avalanche, a hiker who discovered the Iceman on a hike with his wife and later perished after falling down a treacherous path. A molecular archaeologist was found dead in his home after he was finalizing a book about Aussie. The head of the forensic team died of a heart attack, another discoverer died of a brain tumor, and another researcher perished of multiple sclerosis. Yo, say what you will about curses if you believe them or not, when people start dropping all involved in this one find, there's got to be some sort of otherworldly connection going on here. Whatever the case may be, this find is one of the most scientifically precious and also one of the most spiritually terrifying. Should we study this mummy some more and unearth more mysteries of the past, or should we risk the lives of those who study it? Number five on this list is the smelly photo. All right, everybody, beware of the smelly photo, for if you purchase it, then you'll be cursed with a horrible smelling odor for all of eternity. All right, so maybe it's not that dramatic, but apparently this is actually a thing. Mental Floss says this historic daguerreot type is reportedly inhabited by a Victorian gent named Martin. It was initially found in the eaves of an attic and its owner would bring it out for guests to see. Eventually people began to notice that certain smells would mysteriously appear and just as mysteriously disappear such as the scent of roses and cigar or pipe smoke or even the odor of smoke from a wood fire the seller writes. When questioned with a Ouija board the spirit inside was sometimes talkative and even playful, but other times reticent. But some spooky things started happening in the house, like objects disappearing or being moved, and footsteps and whispers faintly heard. These strange goings on became more frequent until finally the image was removed from the house and sent to a collector who reports some continued activity. So I'm unsure if you can still buy this thing or if it's completely off the market for good, but realistically, you probably shouldn't want to be buying it anyways. Your house basically becomes immediately haunted with weird smells if you purchase this photo. Now I will admit some of these smells really aren't that bad, like roses. If this picture can just make my house smell like roses all the time, then I mean that sounds pretty nice. Or honestly cigar smoke 
can be really nice too. Like, there's definitely a time and place to have a good whiff of a cigar, but the big problem is that you can't really control this thing. So if my guy wanted to just scent the house up with the odor of unwashed 1800s Victorian era man, then he could totally do that. This item isn't gonna kill you or anything, but I do think that the novelty would wear off pretty fast and it could get annoying very quickly. Just make sure that you have some Febreze on hand if you do choose to buy it. Number four on this list is the Haunted Donkey. So this one could be very good or very bad depending on the person who purchases it. Mental Floss says this small decorative juice container has a surprisingly spooky backstory. According to the owner, it spontaneously fills up with water. The inherited piece has been exhibiting the odd behavior for years since the owner was a child. At first, they suspected that their grandmother who owned the item at the time was filling it with water, but once she died, they discovered that there was something else at play. One night, the seller knocked against the jug by accident and noticed it sounded like it had liquid in it. When I investigated, I found that there was indeed water in it, they wrote. I thought maybe it was a mistake, they explained, but it's happened sporadically ever since. I'm not scared or anything, but I'm just not into the type of stuff. I wish my Nana well in the afterlife, but it's just not for me, they said. Now one thing that isn't mentioned there is what happens if you drink the water. Apparently if you have a good heart and are kind and caring and look out for your fellow human, then drinking this water is fine and it's believed to even give you good luck. But if you don't possess those qualities that I just listed, if you're rude, if you're selfish, and if you're greedy, if you only look out for yourself and will walk over other individuals for your own personal gain, then drinking this water will do the opposite. You will be cursed with bad luck and it will be very hard to get rid of it. So that's what I mean. This item can be very polarizing and can be super good depending on who buys it or it could be super bad. Number three on this list is the Screaming Skull of Burton Agnes Hall. The Screaming Skull of Burton Agnes Hall wasn't necessarily from a tomb, but it was recovered from a grave, so I think it still counts in this criteria. Burton Agnes Hall was built in the 17th century in Yorkshire. It was built by Sir Henry Griffith, who had three daughters he loved very much. They all moved there and were very happy for a time. One of the daughters was named Anne, and Anne loved to explore the outdoors. One day though, when she was exploring, a gang of robbers got to her and they beat her and left her for dead. When the family found her, there was barely any life left in her. They brought her back to their home, but her time on this world wasn't long. While she was dying, she had a very strange request to her two remaining sisters. She begged them to take her head and put it within the walls of the hall so that she could always be there with her family. She was dying, so they agreed, but neither of them actually intended on taking their sister's head off and keeping it in their home. A few days later, she died, and they buried her outside the hall without keeping their promise. This was a big mistake though. After she was buried, strange noises and banging sounds started happening all over the hall. Screams and crying could be heard throughout and moans the family couldn't ignore. Eventually they gave in, dug Anne up, and took off her head. They brought it into the hall and the disturbances, they stopped. But years passed and the ownership of this hall changed. The new owners, they had no interest in a dead girl's skull in their home and got rid of it, but sure enough, just when they did, the noises and the hauntings started again. Over the centuries, people have tried and tried again to rid themselves of this skull many times, but eventually, they always cave and they have to bring it back in. The skull truly is cursed and it must remain inside the home at all times if you ever want any peace from Anne's spirit. Number two on this list is King Tut's statuettes. King Tut's tomb didn't just have one cursed item, it had multiple. His burial mask is pretty widely known, but many don't know the story of two statuettes that also came from this tomb. These were two small bronze statues found inside the tomb. One of them with their hand over their heart, and the other one with their hand over their mouth. Lord Carnivon, the man who funded the initial excavation, gave these to a friend as a gift. This was meant to be in good faith and a friendly gesture, but he had no idea the trouble that they would cause. The name of the family is omitted in this story to protect their integrity, and the person who received the statues is simply referred to as James. James received these statues and brought them back to America with him, but then started to suffer the consequences. Once wildly successful, James started to lose everything. His company, his money, 
his family. James went through three failed marriages, a complete collapse of his immense fortune, and finally died of illness without ever realizing these statues were part of the problem. He left them to his grandson in his will and the curse continued. When his grandson took hold of these statues, he was a decorated Olympian, but he also suffered a serious fall from grace. Injuries, other accidents, and failed business ventures plagued the grandson from the second that he took hold of these statues until finally he called the museum. He donated them to the museum so that they could be put with some of the other King Tut pieces and the curse could finally be lifted from his family. Now it's certainly possible that this was all a coincidence and this family just got down on their luck at the wrong time. But anything involving King Tut has the potential to be cursed and I wouldn't be surprised if these statues were part of that. Number one on this list is the Unlucky Mummy. The Unlucky Mummy is an ornate wooden coffin that was found in an ancient Egyptian tomb. This coffin's preservation was remarkable for how old experts thought that it must be. The coffin was said to hold the remains of ancient Egyptian princess Amun-Ra. The legend says that in 1890 some British men stumbled upon this casket at an Egyptian excavation site. There were four men and they all suffered greatly right after coming in contact with this coffin. The first man, who initially took ownership of the coffin, was seen leaving his hotel and walking straight into the desert to never be seen again only after one day of possessing said casket. The second man on the very next day was accidentally shot and had to have his arm amputated. The third man, when they did eventually get back to Britain, returned to see that all of his life savings were gone. And the last man died from disease shortly after the discovery of this artifact. And just like that, the curse of the unlucky mummy began. Now there are some misconceptions with this mummy. Some people believe that the unlucky mummy got put onto the Titanic ship and that's what caused the Titanic to sink. That was never the case though. In fact, once the coffin got to Britain, it's never left. That doesn't mean that this thing isn't still cursed though. It currently resides at the British Museum in London. Since its arrival there, other rumors about this ancient artifact have come out, such as the untimely death of writer Bertram Fletcher Robinson. He was convinced that there was no curse surrounding this coffin. In fact, he even wrote extensively on that topic, but then he died shortly afterwards. Incidents like this have happened all throughout history, further solidifying the curse around this coffin. With everything that's happened to it, the term unlucky might just be a bit of an understatement. Number five, the Ring of Sylvianus. The Vine Ring, aka the Ring of Sylvianus, is a gold ring dating back to the fourth century AD. The ring was discovered in the fields of a farm in 1785 in Hampshire, England. Originally the property of a British Roman named Sylvianus. Apparently it was stolen by a person named Sanicianus, upon which Sylvianus hexed the ring with a curse. That's right. In 1888, the owner of the property wrote about the ring in a history of his property, which is now a National Trust property. The ring went on display there in April 2013, where it's been ever since. Oddly, in 1929, during excavations of the site of the Roman Temple of Nodens at Lydney Park, archaeologist Sir Mortimer Wheeler discovered the now apparent curse that goes with said ring. Consulting shortly after with one J.R.R. Tolkien, Hmm, that's interesting. The ring is apparently much larger than most rings as well and was perhaps made to be worn over gloves. The band of the ring has 10 edges. Among it is the goddess Venus engraved, along with the saying, live in God. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. The lore goes while at the temple Sylvianus' gold ring vanished. Believing the thief to be an individual named Senecianus, Sylvianus demanded supernatural justice. And at the Temple of Nodens, crafted and carved a hexed tablet known as the Curse Tablet, or Defixio. On the tablet, he wrote, quote, For the god Nodens, Sylvianus has lost a ring and has donated one half of its worth to Nodens. Among those named Senecianus, permit no good health until it is returned to the Temple of Nodens. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that sounds like a spell to me. You better return that, buddy. Nodens is like Poseidon. Yeah, that's not good if he's out there looking for you. Number four, Tutankhamun's trumpets. The trumpets are a pair that were first found in the burial chamber of the 18th dynasty pharaoh, famously known as King Tut. One sterling silver and one bronze. They are considered to be the oldest operational trumpets in the world and the only known surviving examples from ancient Egypt. The trumpets were found in 1922 by Howard Carter during the excavation of Tutankhamun's tomb. Yeah, you know, the whole 
cursed tomb thing. The bronze trumpet was discovered in the tomb's antechamber in a large chest containing other military objects and walking sticks. The silver trumpet was found in the actual burial chamber. Both are engraved with decorative images of the gods. Similar looking trumpets feature in Egyptian wall paintings that are usually, but not always, but most associated with military and war. Silent for more than 3,000 years, the trumpets were played for a live audience of 150 million people through a BBC broadcast live in 1939. And then World War II happened. Because apparently the curator of the Tutankhamun collection at the Egyptian Museum says whenever someone blows into it, a war occurs. The same thing happened in 1967 and the 1991 Gulf War when a student was doing research on Tutankhamun's collection and gave her a whirl. Yeah. The bronze trumpet was one of the artifacts stolen from the Egyptian Museum in Cairo during the Egyptian looting riots in 2011 and then, hilariously enough, returned weeks later. Yeah, apparently it's like really cursed, like haunted cursed. Guy didn't want it anymore. Shocker. Number three on this list is the baker's wedding dress. Marriage is supposed to be one of the happiest times of your life. Finding that partner you intend to spend the rest of your life with and then actually doing just that. Therefore, one of the happiest days of your life should be the day that all of this becomes official your wedding day. That's why it's particularly sad when tragedy or drama occurs on the day of said wedding. Just that is exactly what happened with Anna Baker. Scoop Whoop says, Inside the Baker Mansion in Altoona, USA is the wedding dress of Anna Baker, who fell in love with an iron worker. Legends claim that Anna eloped from her home to get married to her lover, but her father forcibly brought her back and locked her in her bedroom. She then refused to marry anyone else and spent the rest of her life alone. After her death, the members of the Baker family reported spotting Anna's wedding dress at different places around the house. Some of them even saw the spirit of Anna Baker moving around the house dressed in that same wedding dress. Imagine literally getting forced back home and locked in your room by your father as you're getting married. It's no wonder that Anna was pissed and why this specific object has become very cursed. Now it's locked up in a case and hidden from the world in the Baker Mansion. It's a good thing that it is because what Scoop Whoop didn't talk about is the fact that this dress can actually be dangerous. As ridiculous as it actually sounds, it has reportedly tried to strangle people in their sleep before. I know that the image of a floating wedding dress trying to suffocate somebody is kind of humorous, but I promise you that you wouldn't be laughing if it happened to you. I like that this thing is locked up, but would be far more comfortable if we just threw it in the fire and were done with it completely. Number two on this list is the Anguished Man painting. The Anguished Man painting is pretty much exactly what it sounds like, a painting of a man in some very clear anguish. The thing is that this man doesn't really look all that human. He hardly has any facial features at all and almost looks a bit like a burn victim. Also, where his eyeballs should be, there's just these two gaping holes and his mouth also looks like one giant hole with no end. Even without the haunting associated with this picture, it's already pretty scary and I personally have no idea why anyone would want it in their home. That's exactly what Sean Robinson did though and he quickly suffered the consequences. Scoop Whoop says, Fascinated by the charm of the Anguished Man painting, Sean Robinson inherited the painting from his grandmother and decided to hang the painting on the wall of his house. Soon after that, Sean and his family started experiencing paranormal events like cracking of the doors in the middle of the night and sudden blood-curdling screams from nowhere. Sean's wife decided to investigate the origin of the painting and found that the artist who painted the painting killed himself and before doing that, he mixed his own blood with the paint that he used in making the painting. Learning this, the couple decided to hide the painting in the basement of their house in Cumbria. So, the first thing about this story that is kind of questionable is how anybody could be fascinated by the charm of this thing. It's gross, and I don't like looking at it, let alone having it hanging in my home. The second thing that's super questionable is why we decided to hide it. I swear, none of these people have ever heard of fire before, guys. Like, great, thank you for hiding it from the world. This is helpful, but what would be even more helpful is if we just took a match and burned it so nobody ever has to deal with it again. I apologize to the artist who painted this thing, but if you're going to use your own blood and make a haunted painting, then come on, man. kind of deserves to be burned. And finally, number one on this list is the Thomas Busby Chair. This chair is freaking deadly, man, and even though it's pretty much safe from public use now, 
I still hate that it exists. Scoopoop says, popularly known as Busby's stoop chair, this wooden furniture is cursed by the spirit of Thomas Busby, who was known to ruthlessly murder people. Before getting hanged for his crimes, he requested to have a meal in his favorite local pub. Upon finishing his meal, he stood and said, may sudden death come to anyone who dare sit on my chair. And ever since then, 63 people who dared to sit on the chair met untimely and terrifying deaths. Later, the owner of the pub donated the chair to the Thirsk Museum UK, and it's still there, hung one and a half meters off the ground to prevent any further deaths. Can you imagine owning that pub and being like, oh, no worries, 60 people have died in this chair, all is good. Like, how the heck did we allow 63 separate people to sit in this chair and die? And okay, like, I'm happy that it's hanging one and a half meters off the ground and nobody can sit in it, but guys, come on. This is literally a dangerous weapon that we have right here. The fact that this thing hasn't been totally dismantled is kind of ridiculous. What happens if somebody steals this chair and then decides, you know what, I'm gonna murder people with it without anybody finding out? Frankly, I think history should have hidden this thing a little bit better. Hopefully we don't hear any more murderous stories about it from here on out. Number five, the organ. Music is the basis of like every good horror movie, isn't it? Music playing from the other room by itself? Yeah, that scares the shit out of me. When I forget my Bluetooth is on and I hear the music from the other room, my heart skips a beat. And there's some Shakespeare sonnets on there, you know? So it sounds like some dudes in the other room just talking to me in Old English. Well, there's actually an instrument that plays by itself, apparently, every night around 9 p.m. Unless it has priests bless it to keep it only wood and ivory. Apparently, it likes to play a little number or two from the other side. Residing in the Warren's Occult Museum in Monroe, Connecticut, Ed Warren, the husband of the famous demonologist duo, apparently likes his classic music. Well, not live, I should say. He obtained the organ apparently after authorities cleaned out a haunted house owned by Reverend Eliakim Phelps in Stratford, Connecticut. Somebody from the authority at the city of Stratford reached out to Ed asking him if he'd be interested in obtaining a musical instrument in which needed some special handling. Nothing like a dusty old haunted organ. Like the old hockey games and churches organs, you know? Apparently one night, Ed was woken up by the sounds of the chords of the organ being played. It was late at night, so naturally, Ed thought maybe someone had broken in and was fiddling downstairs with the instrument. Ed went down to check it out, and as soon as he entered the museum where the Warren's haunted items are kept, the organ would just stop. Yeah, creepy. And also annoying. Like, why do ghosts always do that? It's so like trickster of them, you know? This would happen over and over and over again. The organ finally stayed quiet semi-permanently when after the Warrens asked a priest to bless the organ on a regular basis. Apparently it needed to be continuously cleansed or else the mysterious pianist would start their eerie tune again. Yeah, organs have to be the scariest instrument on this planet. So Halloween-y sounding, you know what I mean? And so Dracula-ish. Toccata and D minor, just Number four, the wedding dress. Your wedding day is supposed to be the happiest day of your life, isn't it? Dressed to the nines, till death do us part, cake smashed into your face, yada yada yada, and of course, that iconic wedding dress, you know? Yeah, it's tradition. So what's this wedding dress doing in the Warren's Occult Museum then? Well, the official story behind the white gown in the Occult Museum is that of the White Lady of Union Graveyard. She has been spotted for decades. Many claim they have seen the lady in white at Union Cemetery. She's said to walk the graveyard at night and locals tell us they've also seen her on nearby roads. Union Cemetery sits just off the junction of routes 59 and 136 in Easton, Connecticut. The legend goes, it's the home of a spiritual entity that allegedly walks the property. I can tell you that now for a fact that this place is haunted. It's one of the most haunted places around, said Lorraine Warren herself. Yeah, and she's seen some stuff in her time. One of the most infamous encounters is that late one night, a man was driving down Stepney Road in his pickup truck just past Union Cemetery. Out of nowhere, a woman in a white dress appeared in the middle of the road. The man couldn't slow down in time and struck the woman head on. When the man screeched to the side of the road, there was no sight of the woman he had hit. Apparently this happens more often than you think on that road. Whoever she was, apparently the couple has her dress locked in the Museum of the Occult Finds and deems it spooky enough to leave it alone. Number three on this list is the Maori Warrior Masks. Now these warrior masks hold a curse that won't affect everyone, just a small portion of people. Specifically, women who are soon to be expecting children. The Occult Museum says, New Zealand's Maori warriors are part of an ancient tribe who would carve unique masks 
masks when it was time for battle. When a man died in the mask, it was believed that his soul would remain trapped in the mask they were wearing. Although their mythology does not dictate that any harm is done by the trapped souls, the presence of the masks has a strange and sometimes fatal effect on pregnant women. Women who are expecting often experience complications when they come in contact with the masks. It's unknown why this phenomenon occurs, but the museum that holds the remaining masks posts a warning that pregnant women should stay away. The literal museum is out here warning pregnant women not to come. That's how you know that this thing's seriously dangerous. Like whenever a business or enterprise does something that's actually gonna lose them money, that's when you have my attention. Considering they just lost an entire demographic of people, I'm now listening and buying into this curse. The paranormal investigators who aren't pregnant have taken a look at this and they're having a hard time getting to the bottom of it. Some people have suggested that the Maori tribe thought that pregnant women were taboo, but that also doesn't really make any sense because then how would they have repopulated their tribe? Regardless of why it is the way that it is, just know that if you are expecting, that's not the right time to take a look at these masks. Number two on this list is the Surrey ghost car. So this is a weird one and definitely something that paranormal investigators are a bit spooked by. List 25 says crashes are common on the A3 highway in England. So it looked like a routine matter when police in Surrey received calls that a car had veered off the A3 with its headlights blazing. But when officers went to investigate, they found no signs of the reported vehicle. However, a further search revealed chilling results. Just 60 feet from the reported crash scene and buried in twisted undergrowth was the remains of a wrecked car containing a decomposing body of a young man who, as the police estimated, had crashed there five months earlier. Therefore, what the witnesses reported might have been a ghostly apparition of the original car. Now, how on earth does that make any sense at all? You know what, let me answer that for you. It doesn't. First off, how did no one notice this car earlier? And then, what was that ghostly apparition that had a car veer off the road? Paranormal investigators are all scared of this one because who knows what type of effect this ghost car could have on your vehicle. And finally, number one on this list is the cursed mirror. This mirror isn't just cursed with a bad reflection, it's gonna show you something a lot worse than just you with a little bed head or something. Instablog says, if you've seen Oculus, then chances are already you're scared of mirrors. And let's not even go back to the time when Bloody Mary was a whole thing. But if these creepy images of mirrors in the horror genre weren't enough, here's a real object which is most likely cursed. In St. Francisville, Louisiana, there's a plantation house which is one of the most haunted houses in America. Inside the house is this mirror, a cursed mirror. Legend goes that the plantation slave brutally killed the owner of the house named Sarah Woodruff and her daughters inside the house. Ever since then, they remain trapped inside the mirror. Visitors often report sights of handprints on the mirror along with some unexplainable strange marks. And the classic haunting is also rumored figures dressed in white, old fashioned attire visible on the other side of the mirror. Some people who have been exposed to this mirror for longer than they should say that these figures in white follow them around too. That they've even seen them appear in other mirrors outside of the plantation and one or two of them have talked about how they've seen them outside of a mirror entirely as if they were standing like right in front of them. It seems like the longer that you're exposed to this, the more of an impact the curse will have on you. Kind of like, I don't know, radiation poisoning or something like that, where the time you spend among the toxin, that's gonna hurt you more. Obviously, because of this, paranormal investigators don't wanna spend too long investigating this mirror. A short stint doing some research probably won't hurt you, although it will definitely give you a scare considering you're gonna see the figures on the other side. But extended exposure is where the real danger lies with this cursed item. Number five on this list is King Tut's Mask. The curse of King Tut is one of the most famous curses to surround a tomb ever. King Tut was a pharaoh in ancient Egypt who boasted one of the most ornate tombs in history. This tomb carried a curse though and those who entered it suffered fatal consequences. On the pyramids of Giza, there's a very specific curse written on the entrance. It reads, 
All people who enter this tomb who will make evil against this tomb and destroy it may the crocodile be against them in the water and snakes against them on land. May the hippopotamus be against them in water, the scorpion on land. This curse stuck with those who entered. It all started with Howard Carter, the leader of the team, whose canary was eaten by a cobra the second that they first entered the tomb. Then the person who financed the whole excavation died shortly afterwards. And from there, a domino effect occurred where many others involved suffered horrible tragedies or passed away. Some speculate though that it wasn't actually the act of opening the tomb that sparked this curse. But it was what they did with King Tut's mask. King Tut had a burial mask on when he was mummified and put in his tomb. The mask is beautiful. It's meant to resemble the person it's on so that the gods can recognize him and bring him up to heaven. Inside the mask is a bunch of oils and materials that are said to help preserve the body. All of this is all well and good, but on the back of the mask is an inscription. This inscription is said to be a curse similar to the one on the pyramids of Giza. Well, if that wasn't enough, then there's a rumor this mask was broken during the excavation process and had to be reassembled when they took it back to their headquarters. Opening the tomb is already problematic, but to then break the mask of King Tut that has a curse inscribed on it, that's just asking for trouble. Number four on this list is King Casimir IV's coffin. King Casimir was born in 1427 into royalty. By 1440, when he would have only been 13, Casimir was named the Grand Duke of Lithuania and only seven years later in 1447 became the fully fledged King of Poland. He stood as the King of Poland right up until the day he died. Oftentimes, kings don't make it right up until their death, but King Casimir's success was pretty historic. He's known in Polish history as being one of the most politically active and prosperous kings to ever rule over their country. During his reign, he won several wars, recovered territories for Poland, and made their royal family one of the leaders in Europe. Due to all of the glory that he received in his life, it was only fitting that he have a tomb that reflected this. He died when he was 65 years old in 1492 and was put to rest in the chapel of Weywell Castle. There he lay for roughly 500 years until 1973 researchers opened the tomb to find a horrible surprise. The researchers opened this tomb and investigated the mummification process and all the artifacts he was buried with. They took his body and coffin out of this place and brought it back to their lab. What they didn't realize though was that this coffin had a curse to it. It's estimated that over 15 people died who worked on researching this body and this coffin. It took a while before they realized what was causing this death, but eventually they discovered the error of their ways. You see, the coffin was cursed, but it wasn't cursed with anything ghostly. It was cursed with Aspergillus flavus. Cursed is also a misleading word to use in this instance as well, because Aspergillus flavus is actually a pathogenic fungus. A fungus that when exposed to people, can become a killer. For a long time, people thought that there truly was an ancient curse surrounding this coffin, but it was actually this fungus that kept preying on people's immune systems. Eventually, King Casimir's body was taken and put back into his tomb, but not before the damage had been done and over 15 people had lost their lives. Number three on this list is the Hope Diamond. Don't get me wrong, guys. I would love to have this thing, but I just don't know if the juice is worth the squeeze here. Google Arts and Culture says, one of the the most famous diamonds in the world, the Hope Diamond, originated in the Kular mine in Andhra Pradesh, India. According to legend, the stone is cursed and brings misfortune to anyone who owns it. The curse is said to have come about when the original diamond was stolen from the eye of a statue. The thief met a grisly end, kickstarting a pattern of misfortune for all those who possessed the diamond. Over the years, owners of the Hope Diamond have befallen fates including death by murder, execution, they've taken their own lives, bankruptcy, and imprisonment. Thankfully, the curse seems to have been lifted when the diamond was donated to the Smithsonian in 1958. Now, I don't really buy into the fact that this curse is lifted, in my opinion. Like, literally, if you own this diamond, then you die or someone you love dies. That's what's happened throughout history. In the best possible case scenario, you just get hit with, like, horrible luck and lose all your money or some other horrible thing. There just really isn't any good way to spin this 
this, owning the Hope Diamond is pretty much a horrible idea. Number two on this list is the Unlucky Mummy. Do not get on a boat if said boat is also carrying this mummy. Google Arts and Culture says the Unlucky Mummy isn't actually a mummy, but the mummy board or coffin lid of a high status woman who lived in around 950 to 900 BCE. Discovered in Thebes in the 1800s, the four young Englishmen who first purchased the mummy all died in unfortunate circumstances. Rumors of the curse soon spread, and in the early 20th century, journalist William Thomas Steed wrote an article on the jinxed artifact. Steed went on to be one of the passengers on the doomed Titanic. It's said that he told stories of the curse in the run-up to the disaster, with many believing that the mummy itself caused the ship's watery end. Today, the unlucky mummy is on display in the British Museum. The Titanic was supposed to be unsinkable. Enter in the unlucky mummy and boom, now the unsinkable ship goes down. Maybe it's a stretch to say that this thing caused the literal Titanic crash, but I can at least guarantee that it probably didn't help. At least this thing is now locked up in a museum very much on land and not connected to any boats that I know of. And number one on this list is the Hands Resist Him painting. I'm all about having some cool groundbreaking art, but this painting definitely crosses the line. The lineup says there is no doubt the painting is disturbing. It shows a young boy standing next to a girl doll with hollow eyes and a sad downturned mouth. The doll is holding a strange device with wires coming out of it. The eeriest part of the painting are the many disembodied children's hands reaching toward the boy through the glass panels of a door just behind him. But even more disturbing than the painting itself are the stories of what has happened to people who come in contact with it. A few years after the painting was sold, the art critic Henry Seldes died. Then the gallery owner died. Then in 1984, John Marley died. The painting disappeared, not surfacing again until 2000 in a bizarre posting on eBay. The new owners were trying to sell it because they said, it was haunted. They claimed the boy and the doll in the picture would fight with each other during the night, terrifying their four-year-old daughter. They set up a motion sensing camera in the room for three nights and claimed they had captured the boy in the picture, leaving the frame and coming into the room, apparently fleeing in terror. The literal kid in the painting is leaving. Not freaking cool, guys. My paintings are supposed to be static and not moving, and they definitely aren't supposed to be walking around my home scaring the living bejesus out of me and my family. Apparently, this painting is locked up in a storage locker now, and no one is allowed to see it. Our first spot is the Anguished Man painting, a painting that's been said to be haunted by the spirit of its former artist. The Anguished Man was painted by... We have no idea, actually. Fittingly, for something like this, its true origin is a mystery, but it's been said that it was painted with a mixture of the artist's own blood and paint, which explains that delightful crimson hue. The artist disappeared after painting it, and in 30 years, no one has been able to trace its origin to anyone. The earliest recorded history of the anguished man comes from a woman in North England who owned the painting after receiving it as a gift and understood that there was something deeply, deeply wrong with it, but kept it anyway, I guess. After years of having it in her possession, she gave the relic off and passed it on to her grandson, Sean Robinson. Once the painting found its way into Sean's possession, he reported consistent hauntings from it, claiming that at night the painting can be heard screaming, writhing, loud noises, the painting falling off the wall in the middle of the night, and even going so far as to claim that he's seen the canvas itself twisting. Locking the painting in his basement, but feeling a compulsion to keep it locked to study it and possibly keep it safe from the outside world, Sean has recorded several videos of the anguished man in action if you feel like you've been getting too much sleep lately. While some skeptics might doubt that the anguished man is actually haunted, there is absolutely zero doubt that the painting itself is as fascinating as it is terrifying. Robert the Doll. At first glance already seems a bit unsettling, between his empty smile and the blank expression of the pet sitting on his lap. If only it ended there. Legend has it that this century-old doll is home to a malevolent spirit locked away. It's been said that misfortune comes to those who don't respect him or insult him. Robert's story begins over a hundred years ago, and his true origin is somewhat disputed. It's agreed that he was owned by Robert Jean Otto, who received it as a boy, but some people claim that it was a gift from his grandfather, while locals prefer to claim nefariously that the doll was given to Robert by a servant of the house who hexed it out of resentment. Whatever the case, Robert brought trouble with him. The real Robert, or Jean as he went by, would refer to the doll as if it was a living entity, claiming that it had a will of its own. When things around the house would break, like the rest of Jean's toys being destroyed, he'd claim that Robert had done it. The family would find Jean in the middle of the night, wailing, surrounded by overturned furniture, claiming once again that Robert had done it. People would claim to see Robert out of the windows, appearing and disappearing at seemingly random times of day. While Jean no longer owns Robert, of course, 
worse. Robert lives in the East Martello Museum in Florida, where it's said that even locked up he still causes havoc, causing electronics to malfunction and go haywire. Employees have reported sleepless nights, strange noises, streaks of bad luck after spending time around Robert. The museum claims too Robert gets one to three letters a day from people asking for forgiveness or asking him to place a curse on others. If you're ever in the area and you feel like checking in, just Make sure you're respectful about it, okay? You never know. Number three, metal balls. So metallic floating shiny balls have been recorded for years. Giant metallic balls like this have been found literally littered around the planet for decades apparently. Ufologist and professor at Stanford Gary Nolan is currently studying these metal Malteser looking things right now that people have collected and auctioned off since the 50s. Right now in Texas there's a dude who has a ton of these apparent real alien tech. Jim Marlin, famous music producer, was given these metal giant pinball looking spheres by a celebrity's bodyguard apparently who said that they were dropped from a craft in his backyard in the early 50s. And like a lot of celebrities have touched these. Dennis Hopper, Jane Fonda, that's Hollywood people. These things are famous on their own. They also move on their own and apparently hold power and light up once in a while on their own. Yeah. That's not scary at all. Uh, hey dad, after Survivor, can you just move your metal giant floating balls out of the living room? Yeah, mom asked me to ask you. In the 70s, the Betts family of Florida came across a small metal sphere the size of a bowling ball in the woods behind their house. Their first thought was the sphere was an old cannonball from a battle. They decided to take the sphere home, and when the sphere seemed to react to the sound of music in the house, making a throbbing, pulsating noise, later the sphere was even seen rolling on its own and would even stop and change direction in the house. Yeah, that's terrifying. Even the Navy went there and checked out these giant mysterious metal orbs. Every time I'm on Reddit seeing these like light orbs trucking around the skies, I can't help but think, is that them? Like that's them. One thing's for sure, they don't seem to be made here. Number two, the Antikythera mechanism. The Antikythera mechanism is an anomaly on its own. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's basically an ancient computer that uses the cosmos to predict astronomical events. Thought to have been the first analog computer ever created, and no, it wasn't made in a garage in 1997 somewhere. It was invented by who knows who, like 2,000 years ago. Captain Demetrios Kontos and his crew of sea sponge divers discovered the Antikythera shipwreck in early 1900 just off Antikythera in Greece. Hence the name. I also find it hilarious that divers diving for something you wipe your butt with found an ancient computer. Like, something about that just amuses me. They recovered tons of artifacts during the expedition, helping pull up the shipwreck and this precious baby. Many thought it was cursed immediately after its first handlings. Apparently after its discovery, three of the divers who dove down died shortly after its find. Presumably of course of the bends of overwork, but locals think this device was to blame. At 150 feet deep, just off Point Glyphadia, the Greek island, the team retrieved millions in bronze and marble statues, pottery, glassware, jewelry, coins, and this ancient mechanism. It was a find of a century and still is. The device is made entirely out of a single bronze sheet built in a wooden case about the size of a shoebox. The case and its faces are covered with Greek inscriptions which indicate the device's astronomical and calendrical purpose. It's basically a computer built entirely out of cogs, wheels, gears, and faces and it would tell you where you were amongst the cosmos. The first alarm clock computer calendar hybrid hybrid again 2200 years ago. Like, no machinery, no watches, no laser cutters, basically everything we have in our iPhones right now within a wooden box 2,000 years ago. Again, it's funny, they were collecting sea sponges to wipe our butts and then stumbled upon a computer. Yeah. You can find it at the National Archaeological Museum of Athens. And number one, the Codex Gigas. Obviously, this one's going to be my number one pick. Apparently, it translates to giant book, and it's big. It weighs about 170 pounds. Yeah, I'm kind of like really uncomfortable what I've learned and read about this book. It's the largest medieval manuscript in the world. The manuscript is also known as the Devil's Bible due to its highly unusual full page portrait and detail of Satan and the legends surrounding its creation. Illuminated Bibles were a typical feature of Roman monastic books, but even with this one, the page size alone of the Gigas is notably larger for its time. And it's made out of about 180 donkeys. Yeah, sorry. 
Poor little guys. The most famous myth is that the scribe traded his soul to the Prince of Darkness himself so that he could complete the book in only one night. Everything within the book has been handwritten by a single anonymous person. Created in the early 13th century in the Benedictine Monastery of Bohemia, now modern day Czech Republic, this book holds demonic power. The manuscript contains the complete Bible, Old and New Testaments, as well as all medicinal and cosmological knowledge, all written in Latin, and predated glyphs. However, it is unbeknownst to any of us, missing 10 pages. Yeah, just ripped out missing. It's like a movie right there. Apparently some think the Codex was created by Herman the Recluse in the Benedictine Monastery in the Czech Republic before being stolen and taken to Prague by the Emperor Rudolf II, who, fun fact, also stole the Voynich Manuscript at one point. Yeah, this guy loved collecting like cursed, demonic, haunted scriptures, I guess. According to legend, the scribe was a monk who promised to create in one night a book to glorify the monastery forever, including all human knowledge. Near midnight, he became sure that he couldn't complete this task alone, so whipped out his pen and made a deal with Lucifer, asking him to help him finish the book in exchange for his soul. That's not really a good idea. It's thought it would have taken him at least 30 years nonstop writing to complete it. The book lays in the National Library of Sweden in Stockholm home where it is on display for the general public. Dude, I can't read Goosebumps without having nightmares, let alone going near this thing. Nah, no, I'm good. Number five on this list is the British Museum. The British Museum has a super haunted item in it that is said to be somewhat responsible for the death of hundreds of individuals. The unlucky mummy. Museum Crush says, not actually a mummy, but the mummy board or coffin lid of an unknown high status woman from the 21st or 22nd dynasty. The British Museum's unlucky mummy has earned quite the reputation for causing destruction through its ancient curse. The mysterious mummy was found at Thebes in the late 1800s and tales of its curse start soon after that. It's said that of the four young Englishmen who bought it, two died in shooting incidents and two died in poverty. A string of illnesses, accidents, and deaths following this are said to be attributed to the mummy. One of the most astonishing rumors surrounding the mummy's curse is that it caused the sinking of the Titanic with the loss of more than 1,000 500 lives. One of the victims on the Titanic was journalist William Thomas Steed, who was one of the first to pen articles about the mummy's curse. Survivors from the disaster recall Steed telling stories of the ominous artifact over dinner, and as the mummy's sinister reputation grew, people even began to believe that its presence on board caused the disaster. Now I will say this, there was no actual record of the mummy being on the Titanic. I mean, think about it. If it was, then how could it be in the museum right now? It would be at the bottom of the ocean. So we know that it was never actually there, but that didn't stop it from cursing the boat all the same. It's believed that Steed carried this curse onto the ship, and that the telling of these stories are what ultimately cursed the ship to begin with. Almost as if bringing up the mummy multiple times in a row unleashed its power. For my sake, I really hope that this isn't the case though. Pretty sure I've talked about this mummy a few times before on this channel, and if this is like a Beetlejuice thing, like say it so many times and then it happens, then I could be in for some trouble. Number four on this list is the Royal Museum's Greenwich. So apparently the Queen's house in the museum actually has a cursed piece of architecture built into it. Museum Crush says, rather a large object, the tulip staircase of the Queen's house of Royal Museum's Greenwich lays claim to being the first geometric self supporting spiral stair in Britain and is rightly regarded as one of the great features of the former royal residence. But it is also the location of the Rev R. W. Hardy's famous ghost photograph. The retired Canadian vicar and his wife visited the house in 1966 and like many people before and since happily snapped away at the elegant spiral of stairs. But it wasn't until they returned to British Columbia and developed their films that they noticed a scarily cloaked spectral figure climbing the stairs. Subsequent investigations into both stairs and photograph have thrown no further light on the unearthly mystery, although as recently as 2002 a member of staff reported seeing a ghostly figure cross a balcony of the stairway before disappearing in time-honored ghostly fashion through a wall. I guess you could argue the staircase isn't necessarily an item, but 
Who cares? The museum is still as haunted as ever and maybe even more so. At least with other museums that have haunted or cursed items, the curse just pertains to that object. And usually if you don't touch the object or interact with it, you should be fine. Just walking around this place and especially going up or down the stairs carries a pretty heavy risk to it. Be very careful around the stairs at the Queen's house if you ever end up going. Number 3. The Woman of Lent How modern art can be a bit confusing. It's hard to understand and an artist's true meaning behind their work, especially when things start to get abstract. Looking at the woman from Lem's statue, it's hard to even make out what this is supposed to be. A fertility statue? Primitive bog roll holder? You wouldn't even know just by looking at it just how lethally cursed this statue is. We don't know who crafted this or why. But we do know that under no circumstances whatsoever should you ever touch the Woman of Lem statue, lest you're looking to incur the wrath of a centuries old evil. The statue was first uncovered in 1878 in Lem, Cyprus, giving the statue its name. Carbon dating suggests the statue was formed around 3000 BC. Hey, w wait a minute. Do you think Otzi the Iceman ever saw this statue? You think maybe it's the same curse? Was life just significantly more cursed back then? Now back on hand to the topic. Once the statue was found, it began to wreak havoc almost immediately. Legend says four families are purported to have lost someone after touching the statue. The first owner, one Lord Elfont, a lord during Cyprus's time as a colony, lost seven members of his family after acquiring the statue. Sometime afterwards, the next lord to acquire it, Ivor Minucci, obtained the statue and lost his entire family in the span of four years. The next victim, one when Lord Thompson Knoll, just like the others, his family passed away within four years. The stories say that eventually, his remaining surviving sons, understanding that they had a responsibility to rid themselves of this generational evil, gave the statue off to the Royal Scottish Museum in Edinburgh for safekeeping, or maybe just to pass the curse along like a vicious cycle of regifting. Within a year, the museum curator passed away mysteriously. Right now, it's still kept there, locked away behind a glass box never to be touched again by human hands. Let's try and keep it that way. Number 2. The Hope Diamond Now the Hope Diamond has shown up a few times on this channel before, and for good reason. It's considered one of the most haunted objects on the planet. The diamond was first uncovered in India, with reports claiming that the diamond was plucked from the eye of a statue of the goddess Sita, the goddess of beauty and devotion. Legend has it that the first person who ever stole the diamond was attacked by dogs shortly after taking it. From here, the diamond made its way through countless hands, never staying in one pair of hands for too long though. It's said to have been owned by King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette, who as far as I know, never had anything too bad happen to them. You know, at least nothing worth losing your head over. That's a little history joke for you. Look up the French Revolution, or Assassin's Creed Unity, it's the same thing. Throughout the diamond's storied history, it's been said that just about Every owner of the Hope Diamond suffered a horrific fate. 14 confirmed deaths and owners throughout history, and that's only the ones we know of, as there could be countless more. The jeweler who recut the stone into its current form, William Falls, died a ruined man in poverty and hardship after his son Hendrik stole the stone from his father, who would later be prompted to take his own life as repentance for his crime. After passing from owner to owner under grisly circumstances, it finally made its way to Harry Winston, an American jeweler who, possibly making the first smart choice of anyone on this list, thought it better to play with his odds, and donated the diamond to the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History in 1958, where it currently resides sealed away to this day. So what happened when it became museum property? Well, the curators of the Smithsonian were thrilled to receive it, and have said that they consider the gem a crown jewel of their diamond collection, and that in all the time it's been in their watch, no one has suffered any ill effects, and if anything, visitors have gone up. Maybe Indiana Jones was right. Maybe it belongs in a museum. Number 1. King Tut now, number one on our list might be a little bit esoteric. It's the curse of King Tutankhamun. So not quite an object, but worth noting. King Tutankhamun, or King Tut as his close friends like to call him, is arguably the most famous pharaoh of all time. Uncovering his tomb was a landmark moment in Egyptology and archaeology, with his tomb serving as something of a golden goose for archaeologist Howard Carter, who spearheaded the excavation attempts of King Tut's tomb. It took years upon years of concentrated efforts hunting for it, but in 1922, Howard Carter, under the commission of Lord Canaveran, uncovered the late Pharaoh's mighty tomb. Howard Carter, Lord Canaveran, and their companion Evelyn Beauchamp, the daughter of Carnarvon, were the first people to ever step inside King Tutankhamun's resting place in centuries. Unfortunately, it wouldn't go so well for them. The first victim was Lord Canaveran. Upon entering the tomb, he was bitten by a mosquito, and mere weeks later, the bite became deeply infected 
poisoning his blood, leading to a loss of life. The author of Sherlock Holmes, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, upon reading this story in the news, had theorized that there was a curse put in place by the old gods watching over Tutankhamun's tomb. And that's the guy who created Sherlock Holmes, so let's assume he's probably pretty smart and doesn't just jump to conclusions. The next victim, George Gould, was a visitor to the tomb, who developed an intense fever shortly after walking through it. Within months, he had passed away. Next was A.C. Mace, a digger on the excavation team, passed from an intense case of pneumonia shortly after his involvement. Howard Carter's secretary, Captain Bethel, was the next victim, passing away six years after the unearthing under mysterious circumstances, believed to have been smothered in his sleep. Now, Howard Carter, the original excavationist who helmed the venture, didn't believe anything about the curse, claiming that it was all superstition and coincidence not fitting an educated man. He complained, however, that after unearthing the tomb, whenever he would visit Egypt, he noticed repeated sightings of jackals, the same type of Anubis. The the Egyptian god of the dead. Which I've got to say, if I recently uncovered a legendary pharaoh and interrupted his slumber to plunder his riches for my personal gain, I would probably be a bit wary about seeing a symbol of the god of the dead following me around. 16 years later, Howard Carter would pass away of Hodgkin's disease. Could he have been the last victim of the curse? Or did he manage to escape its throes? The king still rests in his tomb in Cairo, where he shall not be disturbed. You're more than welcome to go visit him if you'd like, but please, be respectful. Number five on this list is the die book box. This is an evil box that tormented many people and even claimed some lives along the way. Zach Baggins writes, According to Jewish folklore, a diabok is a dark spirit that takes over the bodies of living people and uses them for evil. Legend has it that a diabok can be trapped inside of a box and prevented from causing mischief unless the box is opened, that is. Several years ago, the diabok box came up for sale on eBay. The seller listed a vintage wine cabinet that came from the estate of a woman who survived a World War or two concentration camp. The seller, an antique dealer named Kevin Manis, claimed that the first owner's granddaughter was terrified of the box, warning him that her grandmother said it held a diabook. After buying the cabinet, he was plagued by a series of unfortunate events and recurring nightmares of an old hag that would brutally attack him, causing him to wake up with bruises on his body. He also experienced an overpowering stench of cat urine in his home. Tragically, his mother suffered a stroke while opening the box. Not surprisingly, he decided to get rid of it. The box eventually ended up in the hands of Missouri Medical Museum director Jason Haxton, who was skeptical about the powers attributed to the box. He soon changed his mind. After acquiring the box, he began to experience a series of medical maladies, including bleeding eyes and strange rashes. He also began to dream of being attacked by an old hag and would also awake with bruises on his body. Kevin Manis told me that while the box was in Haxton's basement, a man died there and his body was found lying next to the box. He eventually became so unnerved by the box that he reached out to scientists and rabbis who instructed him to build a wooden ark lined with 24 karat gold, place the box inside, and bury it in the ground. Now this actually wasn't the end of the story for this box. The box was eventually dug up again and then later donated to a museum. This was after it had tormented a few more people, mind you, though. Now it's fully encased in a glass covering, but even that doesn't stop the evil spirit from coming after people. Many people who have visited this box have reported having serious episodes in the room while they're looking at it. Whatever spirit is trapped inside this box, it is clearly an extremely powerful one. The box remains on display at the museum, but I wouldn't recommend going to check it out if I was you. Number four on this list is the Devil's Rocking Chair. The Devil's Rocking Chair is actually from one of Ed and Lorraine Warren's most famous case, the devil made me do it. Zach Baggins writes, The horror began in July 1980 when David Glatzel, 11 years old, became possessed by a demon. One night he woke up screaming, claiming that he had been visited by a man with big black eyes, a thin face with animal features, jagged teeth, pointed ears, horns, and hooves. David was, everyone agreed, not the kind of kid who liked scary movies or who was likely to make things up, and he was visibly shaken up by this 
experience. He became rather withdrawn and quiet. His older sister, Debbie, asked her fiance, Orrin Johnson, if he would stay with her family for a while and see whether it would help David get out of his depression. Orrin, of course, agreed, but things didn't get better. David reported having more nightmares about the terrifying man who promised to take his soul. Odd scratches and bruises began to appear on the boy, and all the injuries seemed to happen while he was asleep. Odd sounds, which Arn couldn't explain, were heard in the attic. Worst of all, David began to claim that he was now seeing the beast while he was awake. He was always seen sitting in the family's rocking chair, which the beast now claimed as his own. David was the only one who saw the beast in the chair, but family members often saw it rocking back and forth, seemingly under its own power. This was obviously a lot, so the Warrens were brought in to perform the exorcism. The exorcism took place in that rocking chair, and it's thought that the chair itself still has some evil energy from this spirit attached to it. Now the chair resides at the haunted museum, but owner Zach Beggins actually took the exhibit down because the chair was simply too dangerous, he thought. Number three on this list is the Tai Jin mask. We have another cursed item from eBay here that can certainly have its benefits, but also have its drawbacks as well, if you aren't careful with it. Mental Flaw says the person selling this mask claims that they personally witnessed a witch in Thailand capture a Jin Jin or genie in it. Among the mask's alleged talents are the ability to bring the owner riches and the ability to keep vampires away. Both are useful skills, but they come with a price. You must make offerings of food and drink to keep the Jin happy. Not to mention the fact that for the first month you have to meditate on his name three times a day for 20 minutes each. So here's my thing. Riches and the ability to ward off vampires, that sounds cool, I like it. I mean, who wouldn't want to have a magical mask that can make you rich, that'd be awesome. Granted, there is that whole other thing too. This is a Jin, and even though that's really cool, I don't want to fall into a trap of fully trusting this thing. Genies are very tricky. They say one thing, you take it at face value, but they mean something else entirely. So this thing might say something and make you believe that you're getting rich, and then totally flip the script on you and have it mean something else. Also, let's not forget that if you mess up a little bit and don't offer this thing food or water or meditate on it three times a day, then it will probably choose to respond decently badly to you. These are all risks that I personally don't think I'm willing to take. Also, here's my other thing. Like, if this mask is gonna give you tons of riches, then why is somebody selling it on eBay? Why would you need to sell this thing if you're already super rich based on the mask? And if it was that great, then wouldn't you want to keep it? I don't know, just some stuff to consider before you pull the trigger on this thing. Number two on this list is Lisa's shoes. Lisa was a young girl who lived back in the Victorian era a long time ago. Now apparently she died way too soon. We think it was sepsis, but we don't really know when she died or why she died for sure. All we know is that she was taken from the earth way too early. Mental Floss says, said to contain the spirit of a little girl called Lisa, these shoes were found by someone who was curating their late aunt's estate, tucked in a nursery closet alongside various Victorian clothes and toys. They suspected they were haunted, the seller writes, since there was a lot of knocking in the nursery closet. If actually possessed, tap dancing might wake one up in the middle of the night. The noise wasn't the only indication of the shoe's otherworldly nature. The house they were found and was rumored to be home to a number of ghosts, including that of a woman who had murdered her baby there in the 19th century and the spirit of a nine-year-old girl who died of sepsis. So if you're the type of individual who likes to fall asleep to the sound of cursed shoes dancing all over the floor, then I guess this is for you. I don't know how many of those people are out there, but hey, no judgment here. I personally do not have any interest in purchasing some cursed shoes, but that's just me. Apparently, if your heart really does desire such a thing, then a few clicks on eBay is all it's gonna take. And finally, number one on this list is the Anguished Man painting. The Anguished Man painting has been something that we've talked a decent amount about on this channel when it comes to haunted and cursed paintings. Well, you can buy this haunted slash cursed painting on eBay if you wanted to do so. The seller of this oil painting describes it as a horrific paranormal portrait. The artist is unknown, but according to its 
owner, the artwork may be responsible for a number of spooky goings on around the house. Since owning this painting, I've experienced a number of strange paranormal events that cannot be easily explained at the seller writes in the listing. These include hearing disembodied footsteps from elsewhere in the house, the sound of bird songs appearing out of thin air in the living room, and finally observing a heavy metal door latch lift by itself and the kitchen door open by itself. So that's a hard pass from me guys. Not only will this painting curse you and your home, but also like it really isn't that great of a painting to begin with. I mean, I don't want to disrespect the artist here. I'm sure that they had a great vision, but I don't really want to have a picture of a screaming dude in my home just looking at me all the time. Even if this thing wasn't haunted and was just totally normal, that would still scare the bejesus out of me late at night when I'm half asleep going to get a glass of water or something. If you are about it though, then hit them up on eBay and you can get the Anguished Man painting in your home today. Number five on this list is the Bassano Vase. The Bassano Vase is one of those old family heirlooms that you really don't want to get passed down to you. It started out as a wedding gift, also something that you really don't want to receive on your wedding day. Anyways, it's a pretty vase, so the couple accepted this vase and then tragedy struck. On the night of the wedding, after the ceremony, the bride was found dead in her room. It's said that she had her hands wrapped around this vase as she was dying and in her final breaths before passing, vowed to have her revenge. This little vow at the end muddles things because we're not sure whether it was the vow that cursed the vase or if the vase was already cursed, but whatever. Adding it to the story makes it a little bit more interesting, so she cursed the vase. Either way, at this point, nobody realized that the vase had anything to do with the death of the young bride, which is really too bad. The vase turned into a family heirloom and was passed from generation to generation. As you can imagine, it didn't go so great for those who received this. More people kept dying, all of them extremely mysteriously. Eventually, somebody caught on and decided that this vase needed to get locked up for good. For a time, it was locked up in a secret location and nobody knew where this vase was. It should have stayed that way, though. The vase in 1988 saw the light of day again and was sold off to a wealthy bidder who basically just bought an extremely expensive way to die. He died very soon after receiving this vase and thus it began all over again. The vase exchanged hands some more, killing off more and more people as it went. Finally, somebody with some proactive thinking gave it to the police. Now, nobody knows where it ended up. Whether the police destroyed it, hit it, or held onto it is anyone's guess. Number four on this list is the Chained Oak. This one is really interesting, and even though history hasn't necessarily hidden it from us, it's definitely tried to negate the consequences. Atlas Obscura says, The Chained Oak is an old tree wrapped in chains to prevent its branches from falling. This is due to an alleged curse put on the tree when, in 1821, the 15th Earl of Shrewsbury refused a woman's pleas for money. It's said that she then put a curse upon the nearby oak. For every branch that falls from the tree, a member of the Earl's family would die. Later that night, one of the Earl's relatives died suddenly under mysterious circumstances. Convinced that the curse was true, the Earl ordered that the branches of the oak should be chained up to prevent more from falling. I feel for that Earl's family, man. Like, literally, I'm just a grandkid of this dude, and now if this tree breaks a little bit, I'm gonna die? No thank you. At least the Earl had the sense to chain up the tree and make sure that it won't happen to harm his family. But one big storm rolls through that place and wham, now some random person is just dying. Just pray that you don't happen to be the descendant of this guy, and if you are, cross your fingers those chains were done up tight. Number three, the Delphi Sapphire. The Delphi Sapphire is a seemingly beautiful gem that carries with it a dark legacy. It's also known as the Gem of Sorrow, named for the misfortune it brings upon all those who've owned it. Its first owner was a British cavalryman named Colonel Ferris, who stole the gem from a sacred temple in India in the 18th century. Soon after returning to England, he was plagued with financial destitution, bringing his family to the brink of collapse. Shortly after this, his family all started to develop debilitating diseases. Ferris suspected that the gem was responsible for these wrongdoings, and attempted to pass it off to a family friend who felt great gravely ill immediately after taking it in. Shortly after Ferris's friend passed, the gem was bought by Edward Heron Allen, a scientist who similarly experienced his life falling apart after acquiring the gem. In a desperate attempt to free himself of the 
the curse, Edward threw the gem into Regent's Canal, thinking that he'd freed himself of the accursed stone. Sadly, much like the one true ring, this gem wasn't going to stay at the bottom of a river. It was fished out of the canal and quickly sold to a local jeweler, who recognized the stone as one he had mounted onto a ring for a client, one Edward Heron Allen. Thinking he was doing Edward a favor, the jeweler crafted a new ring and returned it to Edward. Isn't that nice? From there on, Edward swiftly tried to rid himself of it again, this time giving it off to a singer, who after a brief ownership, lost her voice entirely and never sang again. With the ring once again in his possession, Edward decided to end the vicious cycle of re-gifting and lock the sapphire away. He locked it in seven stacked boxes surrounded by good luck charms and gave it to his bank to store in their vault until his passing. Never to be opened, never to be sold. Heron even advised the bank that after his passing, it should be kept for another 33 years, just in case there was any residual curse smell in the box, I guess. Anyway, eventually, the sapphire found its way to a museum, as these things always do, who upon opening the seven boxes, found inside a letter reading, This sapphire is accursed, and stained with the blood and dishonor of everyone who has ever owned it. Whoever opens this box, do with it what you wish. My advice, however, is to throw it into the sea. Number two, James Dean's car. Absolutely nothing is cooler than driving a souped up Porsche, and in the 1950s, there was no one cooler than James Dean. Aside from being the cultural face of 1950s teenage delusionment and an icon for outcasts of his day, James Dean had a passion for cars and racing, and had a collection of impeccable Porsches, although the last one he would ever own was a Porsche Spider 550. It was actually commissioned for Dean, and was one of the first makes of that car produced. A souped up Porsche capable of race speeds, it seemed like the perfect car for a hot-headed rebel. But from the moment he got it, people were wary. A friend of Dean's, actor Alec Guinness, wrote in his diary after meeting James with the car that the sports car looked sinister to me, exhausted, hungry. I found myself saying in a voice I could hardly recognize, please never get in that car. You will be found dead. Normally any friend telling you outright not to get into a car would be worth paying attention to, but I feel like special triple warning should be heeded if it was Obi-Wan Kenobi telling me not to do it. Sure enough, Dean ignored, went ahead and raced the car anyway, leading to a tragic car accident that would claim the actor's life. Shortly thereafter, the spider was chopped for parts, where its engine was bought by Dr. William Eskrick and installed in his own car. The suspension and transmission of the spider was given to Eskrick's colleague and fellow doctor and racing enthusiast, Troy McHenry. In a race in 1956, both doctors Doctors driving cars with the Porsche's old parts both crashed, leading to the death of McHenry and injuring Eskirk. Somehow, not learning any lessons, the self-proclaimed king of customs, George Barris, purchased the mangled wreck of the 550, hoping to rebuild it as a tourist attraction, where it was sold to the National Safety Council as a harrowing display of road safety. In 1959, while in storage, the car spontaneously caught flame. The tires were sold to a private buyer who had them burst on the road, causing them to careen off. And finally, in 1960, while in transit from Miami, the car disappeared entirely. The whereabouts of the car and its pieces are currently unknown, with the only confirmed part left being a transaxle that was found in Massachusetts. And finally, at our number one spot, the Devil's Rocking Chair. When we think of a devil sitting atop a throne, our mind isn't likely to conjure up the image of a rocking chair. That's more for kindly old grandparents. But for the Glatzel family, it was all too real. Seemingly an unassuming piece of leisure furniture, this twisted piece of haunted mahogany became the focus of one of America's most notorious notorious exorcisms. In the early 1980s, the young son of the Glatzel family, David Glatzel, claimed that he was being plagued by nightmares of a creature with jagged teeth, twisted horns, and hooves. And the family was worried, as the boy wasn't really the kind to make things up. The boy insisted that he would see this beast sitting in the chair, rocking, watching him, laughing, threatening to steal his soul away. You know, regular old imaginary friend stuff. The visions persisted and even manifested physically, with David waking up in the middle of the night with scratches, bruises, and cuts, as well as red marks around his neck, as if something had been grabbing his throat. He would convulse during the night, and a family member would watch him sleep as he would have seizures repeatedly. David started to hiss and growl at his family, and even was reported to have spoken tongues, quoting from the Bible. Eventually it became too much for the family to bear, and professional help was brought in from, who else? Ed and Lorraine Warren, who performed multiple exorcisms, and brought in a series of priests to try and quell the spirits inside the house. Lorraine asserts that she saw the chair levitate in her time there. After a final exorcism, it's reported that the demon left young David, but found its way into his sister's fiance, one Arne Johnson. She reported the same growls, hissing, as well as slipping into periodic trances he couldn't be shook from. Tragically, Arne was involved in a conflict that led to the death of his landlord, and when he stood trial for it, insisted that he hadn't acted on it, but rather it was the demon possessing him that made him do it. He was locked away. After these dark events, the chair was kept away in storage, for fear that its evils might seep into the rest of the world. It resides now in the haunted museum, owned by Zach Baggins himself, one of the world's foremost experts on the paranormal, and a sort of modern successor to the Warrens, who's indisputably the wisest man to be owning something like
like this. Let's just hope he's not looking to get comfortable in it anytime soon. Number five on this list is Robert the Doll. Robert the Doll is one of the most haunted and cursed dolls on the entire planet. Ghosts and Gravestones says, The story of Robert the Doll dates back to the early 1900s when a young boy named Eugene Robert Otto was given a one-of-a-kind handmade doll by a servant that worked for his parents in his home. Eugene, who everybody called Gene, named the doll Robert and quickly became attached to his new friend. The home where Eugene lived, now called the Artist's House, is located at 534 Eaton Street and was built between 1890 and 1898. It was here that Eugene was given Robert the doll and where a friendship that lasted throughout his lifetime and beyond was forged. While he seemed like an ordinary cloth doll, it wasn't long before Robert was involved in strange and somewhat terrifying events. The first hint that something out of the ordinary was happening was one night when Jean, who was only 10 years old, awoke to find Robert the doll sitting at the end of his bed staring at him. Moments later, his mother was awakened by his screams for help and the sounds of furniture being overturned in her son's bedroom. Jean cried for help, begging his mother to rescue him. When she was finally able to wrench the locked door open, she saw poor Jean curled up in fear on his bed, his room in shambles, and Robert the doll sitting at the foot of the bed. And all the child could say was Robert did it. Now this was the first instance where Robert was acting up, but there have been tons of experiences since then where this doll is just doing things that mm, really shouldn't be doing. He now lives in East Martello where visitors flock to see him, although it's a bad idea. There are letters and notes all around Robert from people that have come to see him all begging for Robert's forgiveness. Apparently taking a picture of Robert without his permission will cause him to start to haunt you. This curse has affected hundreds to thousands of people and they all usually end up coming back to Robert begging for freedom from this curse. At this point, paranormal investigators have learned that messing with Robert really isn't the best idea and just leaving this doll alone, probably the smartest thing to do. Number four on this list is the screaming skull. Last I checked, if there is no meat on the bone, then a skull shouldn't be screaming. That's kind of what's going down with this one extremely haunted skull in Burton Agnes Hall, England. Instablog says, what if you touch an object and then you hear terrible deafening screams. That is precisely what happens when you touch this skull at an Elizabethan manor in England. Burton Agnes Hall is the house of Catherine Ann Griffith, who was brutally murdered by numerous bullies in 1620. Her skull still rests inside the house. Why? Because whenever somebody tried to take it out of the house, what happened next terrified them to the bone. People who have tried to touch or disturb that skull have reported seeing a scary ghost walk in and utter a deafening scream. This scared the people so much that they actually ran out of the house in terror. If you're up for a scary challenge, then this might be your chance to prove your mettle to the world, but for the weak-hearted ones, it's wise to stay away. And yeah, guys, I mean, I agree with that article right there. Probably best not to mess with this thing. I mean, a bunch of paranormal investigators won't even go here anymore. If a bunch of paranormal investigators think that this area is too scary for them, then sorry guys, I'm tapping out. It's way too scary for me too. Number three on this list is the Thirsk Museum. Located in Yorkshire Museum, this tiny little quaint museum is the last place you would expect to see something haunted. Enter in the Busby Stoop Chair. Museum Crush says, Yorkshire drunk, criminal, and coin counterfeiter Thomas Busby murdered his father-in-law and fellow counterfeiter Daniel Autie in 1702. Busby was arrested at the local inn and sentenced to death by hanging. According to legend, he laid a curse on his favorite chair at the inn, saying death would come soon to anyone who dared sit in his seat. After his execution, his remains were hung in a gibbet from a stoop at Sand Hutton Crossroads, now the location of the Busby Stoop Inn. The inn and surrounding area were said to be haunted by Busby's ghost, but one chair there in particular had developed a rather sinister reputation following a string of tragic accidents. Second World War 
four airmen who sat in the chair were said to never return from their missions, and the chair also linked to several road accidents and fatal illnesses. In 1978, the inn's landlord removed the chair to Thirsk Museum just a few miles down the road. The chair is now suspended high above the ground of the museum to ensure that no unassuming soul can ever fall foul of its curse again. It's been hung there, unmoved, for 40 years. I've looked into this chair further, and for a while there, it really was that if you sat in this thing, you were going to die. It wasn't going to happen in a year from now or something like that either. Like, we're talking about pretty imminent death here. Number two on this list is the Natural History Museum. The Natural History Museum is one of the most complete museums in the world, and being so complete, it obviously has to include a cursed item. Museum Crush says, This apparently cursed gem was owned by 19th century polymath Edward Heron Allen. So powerful was its curse that he eventually decided to have it stored away in a bank vault inside seven locked boxes with a note of warning to anyone who dare handle it. Heron Allen also left strict instruction not to remove the amethyst until 33 years after his death. The curious story surrounding the stone says that it was stolen from the temple of the god Indra during the Indian mutiny by Colonel W. Ferris, an officer of the Bengal cavalry. After Ferris's health deteriorated and he died, the cursed amethyst was passed on to his son, who suffered a similar similar bout of bad luck and eventually gave it to Heron Allen. After facing a string of health and financial misfortunes, Heron Allen made several attempts to get rid of the stone, but they all proved unsuccessful each time it returned to him. Less than a year after his death, Heron Allen's daughter donated the amethyst to the Natural History Museum, where it is on display in the vault. And finally, number one on this list is Zach Baggins Haunted Museum. The number one voted haunted place in in America has got to make this list, considering it's full of cursed objects. There isn't just one object here that's cursed, there are tons. In fact, we would need our own separate video dedicated solely to this place to even begin to break down all the scary stuff that's in this museum. Just listen to this small excerpt from the website. Among the hundreds of terrifying possessions, museum goers can even peek inside the VW death van in which Dr. Jack Kevorkian ended the suffering of terminally ill patients as well as get a close-up look at the propofol chair from Michael Jackson's death room. Perhaps most unsettling is the original staircase from the Indiana Demon House, notorious for its powerful paranormal activity before being demolished in 2014. The wooden banister and creaky steps from the house now stand in a dimly lit corner, resting on a blanket of dirt from the location. Following its installation, a group of construction workers walked off the job and refused to come back. These are just a couple of the so-called attractions that this place has to offer. If you go to this museum, then there is a very good chance you will end up walking out with a curse attached to you. That much paranormal energy all lumped into one place, it just spells out something haunted. Be very careful if you ever intend to go here. <laughs> <laughs>